Well, I'm back from my auto trip excursion and these sweet potatoes cured twice as long as they needed to. So when I opened this up, I found one rotten one. I just threw it outside. But for the most part, I mean, I got a little, few little sprouts on them, but they're, they're firm. And I guess they are cured the way they're supposed to be. Like that might have a bad spot on it. I don't know. But overall, they look like they did pretty well. So there's the water. Never refilled it. Only used about half a tray. It's been like three, over oh, three weeks. There's all my roots for next year. Those actually look a lot better than when I cured them. I'm sure they'll make it till next spring now and I'll get it. And that right there, that's going to grow a lot of sweet potatoes. Probably 50 times that much. And once you plant those, they just grow like crazy. The big ones you can cut in half, cure them a little bit, and then you can put them in water, I think. I've never done that. I usually just plant them. But I might just start a bunch of slips and then get them out. Hopefully that are a little bit broader scale than I have been. So they end up looking pretty good. I didn't wash them or anything. Well, they got two trays worth, but they'll last us. We, we're not, we don't eat that many sweet potatoes. The point is, is if you can grow 50 pounds or 100 pounds, you can grow 1,000 pounds if you want to. It's just a matter of scaling it up. Can you be successful or not? And these actually got pretty big considering how late that I put them in. I'd say this worked out just fine. On a bigger scale, I'm not sure how I'd do it. Maybe use a trailer or something. A kiln. There's, I don't know how you would cure them on, on, on a larger scale, but we'll, have, we'll figure it out. On a small garden scale, uh, just home garden, you, if you have an extra bathtub, it worked just really well. So that's it. I'm going to go over to the greenhouse and show you where I was not successful. So here are, I think my peppers are going to be fine. I haven't watered them or anything, and I'll wait to water them. You really shouldn't water them that much. You kind of just leave them in dormancy, but <laughs> my tomatoes completely failed. One of my sons did try to help take care of them somewhat, but I knew that it was a write-off when I left. They just, they failed. 100% failure rate. Did not work, and I don't know exactly why, but so we'll see how the peppers do. I'll wait another week or two then I'll water them because if anything I don't want to over water them they don't they don't like that or need that they don't they're not getting much light so they're not really trying to grow that much that some have put forth some leaves it looks like hopefully the peppers won't fail as bad as the tomatoes did on to the next project well one of the things is I just need to get organized this is just a disaster and it's supposed to be a greenhouse not storage so I'm going to try to it's such a nice day though, I'm gonna go out and work on something else, just enjoying the weather. On a colder day, I'll come in here and take advantage of it being warmer and start organizing this mess. I got stuff in the downstairs. I just, I need to get all of my tools organized. Just, it's just scattered everywhere. I haven't organized all year and it shows. So part of what I'm doing, my organizing, yeah, it's always tires and batteries. Not a great battery, not great tires. Gotta keep aired up, charge the battery. This is kind of like a mobile toolbox. So I'm gonna get more crates and toolboxes in here. Go a little more vertical with it and keep most of what I would normally use in here, like for electrical and plumbing and hardware. Not so much the tools anymore. It's more gonna be just my mobile hardware store or maybe tools I don't use so often. I'll keep them in here and it'll all be more organized. It's somewhat organized, but better it's this, this old honda has some issues it's just too much to put it on the road and i said it didn't exist anymore so i had to quit paying property taxes in virginia so it's like it's not going to leave the land type thing so still runs it just doesn't run well transmission issues that's part of my organizing plan and then this got from a friend here recently this will be my tool so i'll keep all my actual tools in this one that i use all the time because this one's smaller and more portable than that bigger Honda over there. So this will just have all my hand tools, power, and cordless tools. This really gets back in the woods and so forth like that. So it's it's good. I'll hook my little trailer to this. I'm going to get the hitch on it and I'll hook that trailer over there. That little dump trailer. So I'll use that dump trailer in conjunction with that little. I was going to get fix my riding lawnmower and, and use that to pull that trailer. But I'm like, this is better than a riding mower. It's only two-wheel drive, but it's like, why spend money on all those little, you know, fancy ATVs 
the little mini trucks. I mean, they're four-wheel drive and they really go places, but I don't really need that here. So this is next to nothing in cost, and it's like, it'll be my farm vehicle. It'll be, it'll replace a four-wheeler or whatever, the fancier four-wheelers, whatever you call them. They cost, they cost as much as a used car, a nice used car. Forget it, I'll just use this little, little thing here and it, it'll be great. I think it's an excellent solution to new paint disease getting way more than you need. It just, it just is a lot more practical. So what I'm doing here, I got this at Harbor Freight. This is their professional series. It's called, uh, what are they called? Uh, I forgot what they're called. Anyway, this is the Harbor Freight Professional. It was missing the 916. Somebody had stolen the 916, so I got this set. It had been marked down, marked down, marked down. It was like 20 bucks. So I bought it without the 916. And I went on eBay and got it like a Proto or KD 916. It doesn't fit. But I'm getting ready to put these things to the test. Uh, they rate well, so it's all American, which I what I'm going to need. I'm using an awesome Milwaukee. It's bad to the bone. And whenever you're doing mechanic work, you definitely want these nitro gloves. So what I'm going to be doing with this, I either cracked the head or blew a head gasket on that baby. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to put a head on it myself. Take the heads off, get the head, see if I can figure out what's going on and buy a used head or something like that. Well, while I was away, they had a lot of trouble with managing these cows on uh, the hay. They kept busting down the electric. So yesterday we put up the electric. Hopefully they won't tear it down this time. So I'll show you how I did this work. I love these. I got those on eBay, I think. But they just pop right on and off. And you can run your wires on them. I got panels behind the electric. Just double, because when they want to get in there, they all get in there. They've been knocking everything down. It's been all kinds of trouble. Ultimately, my goal will be to have, uh, I need like five more panels to cover this much hay. And I need more hay. I'm going to get more hay. But anyway, you know those little cheap fiberglass posts they give you? Junk. Absolute junk. So I made these. Just get a steel rod and pound it in a few inches. And then this is would hold the bottom of your electric netting. See that little... You would just pop your uh, bottom of your netting in that and then the top of your netting goes on this. But I also back up just for this wire you can see how i did that they keep tripping over the wire ripping it out breaking it so we put it kind of back out of the way like this i just used the old posts that were for the netting to, to save my osage orange which they look pretty good i think they're gonna be fine most of them i lost a few and oh well so now i've just did this along that perimeter of the fence hopefully the cows won't be knocking it down then i ended it here so we'll be able to use this gate then I just hooked a regular piece of like, looks like a number 12 TNN indoor copper wiring. That way we can handle it without getting shocked. And it's got a good hard pop on it, so it's, um, it's working. And what I did is I used my ground for my, hey, I need a clamp for that, ground for my electrical box in there, my little small circuit breaker box. I used the same ground for my electric fence and it's working just fine. That, that thing's down there eight feet or whatever. It's pounded way down there. We're getting a good ground. Hopefully the cows won't bust in. So that was part of what I did yesterday. I got back the day before. And then we uh, did firewood yesterday. Be right back with you. On this, I still got to put my corners on. My, uh, I got my flashing, it was four inch metal. A galvanized flashing steel. Good stuff. I'm gonna put it on these corners wrap that but i'm not doing that right now it's okay for now it's been froze a few times this tank was fine they had to move the uh solar generator over here the cows kept tripping over it so and you can hear that tank filling they had some water issues while i was gone one of the pipes in the well house broke and they weren't getting any water but they managed to get it figured out looks like the cows are happy they're laying there wonder what happened to my goose wonder if she's still around that injured goose wonder if she's dead yet. wonder if she's still running about. I haven't seen her. So I don't know. I'm glad the cows are full. Just on hay and what little bit of grass they can find. So I'm going to get started on that loader. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I have a lot of other projects. But I'm kind of on hold. Because uh, I want to do that butchering. 
coming up in January on my, with my off-grid deep freezer there, meat locker. And I really need to have a forklift to do that job. And I could use a hoist and all that, but I just it would be easier just to use a forklift if I could fix it. And then the moving hay, I, I, I'm the, we just kind of feed it right where it's at now. My whole plan of getting the garden area over there ready by moving the hay bales over, it, we can't do that right now. We're just pushing out a hay bale. So all my mess is ending up here and that's fine. We'll work with it, but I really need a, something to move hay with. And then the sawmill is really just kind of sitting still. If I don't have a way to move the logs, I mean, I can do it the hard way, but I, I really need to get this machine fixed. It does a lot of duty around here. I've just gotten used to having that thing. It's, I don't know how I got by without it before. So I'm gonna give it a shot and try to get it fixed and uh, we'll see an old shade tree here can get it done. And uh, I'll show you some videos as I go, just of me tearing into this thing. And hopefully I, I might be able to fix it for under like six, 700 bucks. Um, if it's one head, if it's both heads, it's gonna be more like around a thousand. Hopefully I'll have the skill to pull it off. If I had to bring in a mechanic, man, the labor is what really gets you on this. I will keep you advised to see if I can figure out what I'm doing. I'm not sure I shared how what happened, but I was working this thing way too hard. I usually just run it a little while, set it down, because I knew it had that head problem. And I was just trying to move too many hay bales, and I just overheated it and popped the gasket or cracked the head all the way or whatever. So I just pushed it too hard. I could have kept babying it, and I never wanted to try fixing it because I knew it would just be sitting here. But now it's just sitting here anyway, so now I have no choice but to fix it. Hopefully I can get this baby running because I really need it. And I'll show you later today, um, something we also did yesterday is loaded some firewood up on the porch. And I'll just show you how we uh, bucket and split it and move it and all that just for most efficiency. Not highly critical. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'll just show you how we do it in a fairly efficient way of just taking care of firewood. Especially now we don't have this machine to help us. I, I want to get a couple cords stacked up this time. We, just, we, we weren't ready with the firewood. So I'll show you some of that later today. By the way, what an absolutely gorgeous day we have today. That's one of the reasons I'm tackling this. It's just such a nice day. Look at them spraying up there. They're just laying it on thick, man. I don't think there's a natural cloud anywhere. It's all sprayed. They're just laying it on. Like, give me a break. Yeah, not one natural cloud. Maybe off in the distance, I can't tell, but nothing around here. Every bit of this is manufactured. Anyway, what a beautiful day. I'm also going to record, and this is a tip I give you, record your mechanic work as you go. That way, if you forget how to put something back together, you have it on video. So I'm going to take this top plate off. Up here working, and look what I find. Key to the door. <laughs> it's been there for a couple years, I didn't even know. One thing I will say is uh, these DC-powered impacts have changed the world of mechanics. In the old days, you had to have an air compressor, and I never had a big compressor. I always had one of the smaller ones, and they work hard to keep up with air tools, and it's just, it's not very efficient. These new uh, electric impacts just change the game. It take me so long to do this by hand. I just pop them right out in a couple of minutes, all these bolts. It is a beautiful thing. Uh, you guys just don't know, you younger folks, don't know what it's like to have to do it all by hand or have air. It's just a new world with this, these batteries. Got the top off here, cover. Start going off to, after the exhaust, the muffler there, and of course, you're gonna shear one of your exhaust bolts off. I'm not gonna worry too much about it because I got three, I'll put it back together with three. Put a gasket on there and hope for the best. It's not like I'm running these things all day, every day kind of thing. Hopefully it won't leak on me. We shall see, but those are hard. I, I can try to get it out, but I don't know. I was careful as I could be trying to get those exhaust bolts loose. Really scary going after those studs. It looks like they're all nuts, which is good. You could still shear off a stud, but hopefully that's not gonna happen. So anyway, there's step one. Got the exhaust off. Muffler. Moving on. So apparently I'm about to take this side off because I'm just I'm gonna be too hard to get in on those bolts. And the scary part is taking these exhaust bolts off the um, exhaust manifold. Man, you don't want to ruin those scary stuff. So I'm gonna uh, take this part here. Looks like this, this comes off with it. So 
fender comes off with this side piece. So off it all comes, so I can get in there and work on this thing. I want to make sure not to strip anything. And I'm going to have to get the intake side off too. I'm going to probably end up taking this whole cover off. Anyway, figuring out as I go. I need a pair of pliers for that wing nut. Three eighths for that little, looks like temperature, temperature lead. Going well enough so far. I'm thinking the head on the right's a bad one. Anyway, I got the exhaust manifold off. Um, that broken bolt was not me. That bolt was already broken. It was just laying there when I got to it. So, and then this other, uh, the nut that was in that stud, it was super loose. These ones in the middle were tight enough like they're supposed to be. That was all loose down there. It's weird, so. And you can tell by that exhaust gasket, there's oil all over it. Now, I don't know if that's from the leaky valve cover up there. I don't know if it's from a leak, uh, a weak. I mean, it could have been. It's just the exhaust manifold wasn't tight enough and it just wasn't running right. And I'm not sure. But I'm going to take that head off. So anyway, I got all the um, bolts for this water jacket loose, and it's fine. I got all the intake bolts on the other side loose. I didn't have to take all the sheet metal off. So, so far it's hopeful. I'm getting ready to go to lunch with my wife. So I just wanted to share how this is going. It, it's uh, not as bad as it could be. I'll get this water jacket off, that intake off when I get back. Start on the plumbing. Now, I'm going to have to be really careful with these fuel lines. That's one of the things. I don't want to mess those up. That is a nightmare to fix. So I'll get the fuel lines off. I'm going to pop, maybe get this one head off today and see if that's the one. I'm going to try to leave this other head on. Again, I don't know what's what, but I think I'd rather fix one head, see how it runs. I, I couldn't even get it started again. After it shut down, you could tell the lower part of the motor is still good. The crank's turning, it's trying to compress, all the pistons are moving and that kind of thing. You can tell it's trying to start, it just couldn't quite start. It just didn't have the compression it needed. I'm going to try replacing just this head, leaving this one intact. And if it all if it starts and runs, then I'll know that i got it fixed. If not, I'm going to have to tackle that other head. That has a broken stud in it anyway, so, yeah. That would be the one. You have to pretty much replace it anyway. Or you're just going to have the same problem with the leaking. But I think all that oil and stuff, I know it had a leaky valve cover gas. You can tell that. But I, I just think it was blowing out. I don't think it was leaking in. It doesn't make sense that it would leak in because... That's the exhaust. It would seem like when it's running, it'd blow all that oil back out of the way. But I, that could be wrong. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We're kind of taking a, a chance on it. I don't know how to tell which head is bad. Just, I, I just don't know enough about it to be able to. I don't want to replace both unless I have to. But we'll just try one head and see how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to lunch. I'll get back with you after I get some more work done. So y'all take it easy. All right, I'm back from uh, lunch. Went to the library, the post office, Goodwill drop off a package at the package place. So I got the water jacket off, the exhaust manifold is off. I'm getting ready to start on the fuel lines, getting it dialed down. Let me show you the other side here. Got the uh, air intake off. So that's what it looks like. Got this tube on top I'm gonna start on. A little bit of plumbing over there. It's probably the part I won't remember when it comes time to put it back on. So that's what it looks like. This little wire went to the temperature sender, water temperature. So it's all pretty straightforward. I'll probably get it back together. But here's where I'm at now. I'm going to tackle this plumbing and fuel. Then I'll take that valve cover off and see what we're looking at to get that head off of there. <laughs> 